In a studio environment built around software such as Logic, the audio interface is the hub for all audio inputs and outputs. Unless you're using a simple mobile audio interface with a single pair of stereo inputs and outputs, most studio configurations will have from 8 to 128 inputs and outputs to manage. Therefore, keeping track of signal flow is vital, whether you work with a static setup where devices such as microphone preamps, effects processors and amplifiers are always plugged into the same I.O. of the interface or a variable studio environment with patch bays and revolving session equipment. One of the best ways to keep track of what physical devices are connected and where they are plugged into is by using Logic's I.O. labels. Logic lets you assign tags to any input, output or bus channels similar to physically labeling a patch bay. This provides a distinct benefit by helping you to manage signal flow between the mixer inside Logic and the physical devices in your studio. What's more, these definitions are global, making the labels accessible to any song or template. So just a word of warning, if you've already created labels for your existing I.O. setup, the following exercise will overwrite them when you exit Logic. So first of all, here's a new Logic template and I'm just going to head up to Mix and I'm going to choose I.O. Labels. You'll see on the far left of the window are the default labels for each of the physical inputs and outputs. Immediately to the right of these under the driver I.O. label are headings that correspond to labels supplied by the audio interface's driver. These labels are dictated by the software installed with your audio interface and thus will vary depending on the equipment used. And here in the third column, we have our user labels, which we can use to create our own labels. Uh, at the top here, top left, we have a reset button. So I'm just going to reset all labels and start again. So in my studio, we tend to leave microphones set up. It just makes it easier than the, when we start a recording session, the microphone is already set up ready to go all we need to do is put it into place so let's just look at the inputs here and let's head over to user and if i just click user i can then uh, type in a name for each of these inputs so typically we'll have uh, two microphones on the kick what i would do is name it by the instrument and the microphone so i know which way round they go And then I normally go kick, snare, so a SM7B, and then I'll have a, a condenser that varies, but let's just say AKG snare mic, and then a hi hat, rack tom, floor tom. over left oops over right and then that's room say room mic so there you go and obviously i can keep going so that's named all of those if i just cl click that i don't need to save it if i just click and close if i go if i press x and go into my uh, mixer now I can see that the inputs, the names of the inputs have changed to show the input, but also the corresponding name that I've just created. You've probably mostly been using buses to set up effect sends, but in this example, we're going to use buses to set up headphone feeds back to the live room. So I'm going to click on bus one and I'm going to click on user and we're going to use bus one for the drummer. And I'm going to do the same for bus two, and this time for the bass player. And then all we need to do is just close. We don't need to save. 
and let's go to the IO in the mixer let's have a look at the mixer so here we have our channels and if I now press click where it says send you'll see that it says bus one and the labels my labels that I've just created are in brackets after each of the buses so there's my uh, bus here look the input says drum headphones an important use of this setup is to isolate logic's metronome click to the headphone output only keeping it out of the control room so that you can check to see if there's any evidence of click bleed through the artist's headphones so we're going to use the klopfgeist for the uh, software generated click track and uh, what we're going to do is here in the mix window we're going to click all and we can see that the Klopfgeist is on a stereo output uh, we can change that there's two ways to change that we can go to the click and control click up here and if we go to metronome settings we can change the output here and I've got eight outputs so I'm just gonna click eight seven and eight but you can see that also changes there so really we can just change the output here so I'm now on output seven and eight so it's no longer going through my uh, left and right output to my speakers and of course now uh, if I wanted to I could go back to my IO labels and I could label relabel that as click and that now shows as the click output this is my completed template so let's have a look at the IO first so mix IO labels so in my studio I have 16 tie lines going from the live room into the back of a mixing console in the control room and as I said earlier I usually name them after the instrument and the microphone so there's my drums there's my bass, guitars, vocals and room mics, 16. If I go to outputs, uh, outputs 1 and 2 feed the left and right speakers and then outputs, so I've got 8 outputs. So um, I've actually, I can have 24 but I've just got 8 connected so 1 and 2 are left and right and then outputs 3, 4, 5 and 6 are headphone mixes 1, 2, 3, 4. So basically I use a, a D sub connection from the back of the audio interface and that breaks out then into XLRs. So it connects to the back of the audio interface as a D sub connection, it breaks that into XLRs, uh, channels one and two feed left and right. And then I send the other cable connected through from the, uh, from outputs three to four through to the headphone amplifier in the studio. And um, that means then that I can route back out from the software through these uh, four outputs and which are connected to the inputs for um, separate inputs into the back of the headphone amplifier so I can have a total of I can actually have a total of eight mixes if I want but I've, I find that four is enough for my studio so those are my outputs and then of course down here I've renamed my buses as well so buses one to four uh, headphones one through to four and you'll see why uh, why that is now when we go into the mix I've also got a, uh, a click track as well so let's have a look at the mix window now so this is my uh, mix window and you can see that the inputs now the name of the inputs correspond with the name of each track which makes it really easy to see the input and the output of each track so you can see the signal flow going through the channel these are all on stereo outputs so the, 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 the I'm mixing in the box I'm not using my mixing console my mixing console the output uh, section anyway I'm using the input section but not the output section because the output section is is um, is bypassed I just go straight out from software then uh, you can see here I've got my sends and if I just click those sends you'll see that bus one has been renamed to cans number one and that is going to output cans number one so I can see that that's all uh, nicely sort of in line if you like 
So uh, if I wanted to send cans one to the drummer, I can, and the you know the drummer wanted, so not so much in the way of drums, but wanted extra bass. I'll turn the bass and the guitars up here, and vocals. Uh, that would then go out through the bus, cans one bus. And what I do is if you just turn on the automation, uh, select and turn on the automation, you can have your uh, buses appear here, which is really handy if you just want to control the overall mix. So if it's too loud, for example, and it's uh, clipping in the box, you can just pull the vo volume back a little bit. And then obviously that can be... Uh, rebalanced if you like on the headphone amp itself so the overall this controls the overall volume uh, but it can be useful just to have that in the headphone mix uh, i can do that with all the four headphone mixes so usually in my studio it's drums bass and guitar vocals here's the click track and as i said i've taken the click track out of the stereo mix but i can still send it through to the headphone mixes here and I can adjust the volume uh, of each uh, headphone mix, the click track into each headphone mix. What I also do as well is I turn off things that I don't need and turn on things that I do need. So for example, I don't need MIDI effects, so I turn that off. Uh, I don't need group information at this stage, so I turn that off. I don't need VCAs at this stage, I turn that off. But I turn on track numbers, notes and type and number label and what that gives me then is that gives me the labels at the top so it says audio one through to 16 at the top uh, that also corresponds with the numbers at the bottom the track numbers at the bottom so again uh, i can see that i'm working in line and i've also turned on the notepad so i can add some additional notes and as you can see, I've also colored the groups of instruments, if you like. So it just makes it a bit easier for me to see uh, each uh, sort of group of instruments. And I, I can take those colors and I can add those colors to the track header as well. So that's my template. Uh, I'm now ready to set up for recording.